in his career coming in. Top one brings up Derek Jeter. Yankees go down one, two, three in the first. Bottom one now. Tony Womack on second after a leadoff double. Danny Bautista up the middle off Andy Pettit. They are going to wave Womack, and it's one nothing Arizona. How big is that for these guys after what they went through in New York? Bottom two now, second and third. Nobody out for Arizona. Jay Bell to third. Scott Brocious looking him back. Throw to first. Routine one out. But the Yankees intentionally walk Damian Miller to load the bases for the unit. To third. Brocious this time he's coming home. But his throw is offline. Pulls Jorge Posada off the plate. Johnson safe at first. No DP. Check it out. The throw to the first base side could have been an inning ending double play. Instead it's only two outs and it cost the Yankees. Next up Womack. Just three for 21 in the series coming in. Reggie Sanders and Damian Miller score. Diamondbacks up 3 0. Womack, three for six Saturday. Next up, it's Bautista, who had a huge night. To left center. They wave Johnson. 4 0 Arizona off Andy Pettit. And Bob Brenly is fired up. Fans are fired up. Look at the noise they're making in Arizona. Everybody waving pom poms. Top three now. Luis Soho hoping to get in there and hit for Pettit if Brocious can get on, but Johnson gets him for one out. So Pettit gets up and hits, and he hits all right. Single left off the unit. Soho got to put the bat back. Two outs now. Base is loaded. Johnson gets Posada. The unit works seven, allowed two runs on six hits, struck out seven. Yankees failed to score. Bottom three, Matt Williams. Shane Spencer. Newton. Greg Colburn to third, and that's it for Pettit, who gave up six runs on seven hits in two-plus. Shortest outing in his 24 career postseason starts. Jay Watasek comes in. Reggie Sanders to left. He was four for five. Then Jay Bell goes to left. It's 6-0 Arizona. After a Miller single, Randy Johnson singles to right. Sanders scores. Watasek gave up base hits to eight of the first nine batters he faced. Now one out. Bautista singles to center. Two runs come in. 9-0 Arizona. Bautista three for four with five RB. Next up, Joe Torre. It's Luis Gonzalez, and the hits just keep on coming. Doubles to left. Johnson scores. He becomes the first pitcher to score twice in a World Series game since Bob Gibson in 68. Watasek tied a series record, gave up eight earned runs, and he's still going at him. Greg Colburn singles. It's 11 0. Then Matt Williams doubles to right. Williams was three for five after a three for 17 start in the series. 12 0 Arizona. Jay Watasek. Eight earned on ten hits in one and a third. By the third inning, every Diamondback starter had a hit. By the fourth, every starter had an RBI. With Tossick's ERA, 54. <laughs> Hold on to those Game 7 tickets. You're going to need them. 15 to 2. Arizona sets a new World Series record with 22 hits. The 15 runs, the most ever allowed by the Yanks in a World Series game. It's New York's most lopsided loss in 293 postseason games. So game seven is set Sunday at Bob. Kurt Schilling starting against his baseball idol, Roger Clemens. It's the first World Series game seven for the Yanks since 1964. Clemens and Schilling, that should also sound familiar. Speaking of which, this marked the sixth time in history two 20-game winners met in the deciding game of a World Series. Last time, 1985, when Brett Saberhagen bested John Tudor. The home team had won every game in the World Series leading into Game 7. Mel Stottlemyre, who pitched Game 7 in 1964, warming up his pupil Roger Clemens. Kurt Schilling, the first pitcher to make three starts in World Series since Jack Morris in 1991, and he had it going with the leadoff batter Derek Jeter. Next batter is Paul O'Neill. Schilling working on three days rest again. O'Neill goes down and gets this one, sends it into the gap. He's got those 39-year-old legs working and getting greedy. Dutton stop at second. Bautista to counsel to Matt Williams, and he's out. Bottom of the first, one on, two outs, and it's Clemens facing Matt Williams. Clemens leaving a runner at second. Gets out of the inning, top of the second. Nobody on, two outs, Schilling against Shane Spencer, who homered off Schilling earlier in the series. Got a lot of it, but not all of it. Finley got all of it. Still scoreless. Bottom two. Still no score. Two on, one out, Clemens against Damian Miller. Clemens, three strikeouts through two. Bottom three, still no score. Two on, two outs, Clemens, Finley, six Ks through three. Bottom four, still no score. One on, one out, Clemens against Damian Miller, eight Ks through four. Clemens, counsel, bottom five. Little number, Clemens can't get it, but Jeter is there to clean up the mess. 
top six, no score. Nobody on, one out, Schilling against Scott Rochus, the former World Series MVP. Eighth victim for Schilling through six innings. Bottom six, runner at first, nobody out, Clemens against Danny Bautista. Bautista into the gap, that'll bring in Steve Finley. Batista gets greedy and commits the cardinal sin, making the first out of the inning at third. A Pete Rose-like slide from 1975. one nothing Diamondbacks. Great play by Jeter on the relay to get Batista. Top seven, one nothing D-backs. Two men aboard. Schilling against Tino Martinez in another big hit. Jeter scores were tied at one. The mayor, Rudolph Giuliani, loving it. Two batters later, two on two out, Schilling against Spencer. Deep but playable. Finley's there and Schilling gets out of it. Bottom seven, tied at one, one on one out. Mike Stanton facing Craig Council with Tony Womack at first. Jorge Posada gets his man at second. Huge play by Posada, heading to the eighth. And guess who's warming up? The unit. Top eight, tied at one, Schilling against Alfonso Soriano. Gone. A splitter. Soriano, who beat the Mariners earlier in the postseason on a game-winning homer. Zim and Torrey love it. Still in the eighth, two on Yanks. One on, two outs, unit against Chuck Knobloch. Inning is over, damage done. Mariano Rivera is on. Bottom of the eighth, two on Yanks, one on, two outs. Rivera gets Bautista, he struck out the side. Bottom nine, two on Yanks, one on, nobody out. Rivera against Damian Miller. The bunt, Rivera's got a chance at second, throws it into center field. Jeter gets banged up on the play, two batters later. One out, Rivera facing Tony Womack, had the big hit against the Cardinals. A bigger hit here, Midry Cummings. The former twin is coming plateward. We're tied at two and a huge hit for Tony Womack. Next batter, Craig Council. Rivera is going in tight. He plunks Council. The bases are loaded. And here's Luis Gonzalez. Here it is. Swing, line drive. Base hit, center field. The ball game is over. Bell comes in to score. And the Arizona Diamondbacks have overtaken the Yankees and have won the World Series. Paul O'Neill and maybe his last game. Derek Jeter not used to this vantage point. The Diamondbacks owner, Jerry Colangelo, loving it. Bringing the first championship to the state of Arizona, the first pro one. Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson, co-MVPs. Last time he had multiple MVPs, 1981. Steve Yeager, Ron Say, and Pedro Guerrero. Johnson, the first pitcher to win three games in the World Series since 1968, when the former donut man, Mickey Lolich, did the honors. Schilling, seven and a third, two earned, nine Ks. Johnson pitches an inning and a third of relief, gets the win a day after getting the win as the starter. Let's go after Carl Ravitch in Arizona. Ravi. Welcome to the new city that never sleeps. Jay Bell, who has been here from the beginning, scores the first ever World Series winning run for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So instead of four in a row for the New York Yankees, it's the first in four years, fastest ever by an expansive franchise to claim a crown. Along with Buck Showalter, who helped build this program, and Peter Gammons, I'm Carl Ravitz. We'll get the thoughts of these gentlemen in just a second. Randy Johnson, folks, the first to ever win five games in a postseason. He's a co-MVP with Kurt Schilling. The two-headed monster dominated the postseason for the Diamondbacks. Rich Eisen is with Randy Johnson. Randy, uh never pitched in the World Series before. Now you're the winner of game six and seven. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, just uh, came out after seventh inning yesterday and Bob asked me if I'd be all right to pitch an inning or two tomorrow and I said sure but I didn't think it would develop but you know Kurt you got to tip your hat off to Kurt. I mean it's a warrior mentality to go out there and do what he did and you know I mean he, he put it all on the line today and we battled back. We were down to our last couple outs and Tony Womack did it in the division series that kept us alive. He did it here tonight, too. Well, now you sign here in the desert, clearly for a moment like this. Is it as you would have dreamed? Yeah. yeah. This is it's very fitting right now that uh, everybody on this team, all the older guys on the team that haven't been to a World Series, that, to win it this way, I mean, obviously you don't want to go down to the seventh game, but like I said, if you're going to win a World Championship, you got to go through the World Championship team. That's the New York Yankees. Well, congratulations. Randy Johnson, winner of game six and seven. Back to you. 
Rich, thank you very much. He is the uh, fourth pitcher to win the last two games of a World Series, and you see three wins in a single series. It has been done before. Mickey Lolich, the last to do it for the Detroit Tigers, and that was back in 1968. You look at what Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling have been able to accomplish. Uh, they were responsible for nine of the 11 Arizona victories in this postseason. So, Peter, this was so, uh, as, as implausible as you said earlier to us. A World Series as we'll ever see. Four games decided by one run, and there were times we were shaking your head saying this can't be happening. I'm not going to say that it was a better World Series in 91 or 75, but it was the most, most implausible of those. Two great ninth inning rallies in New York, this incredible rally against uh, Mariano Rivera, and the sight of Randy Johnson one night after winning game six, coming out to the bullpen and then coming into pitch. Here he comes in with not blocking it. While it was a two to one game, but there was still a runner on base. And then he stayed in for the ninth inning. Gets the first out. And then Tino, good slider away after getting Bernie Williams. And Tony Womack, pretty, pretty good play there. That was a tough play. It took a little, a little divot in there. He strikes out Posada for the series now. <laughs> It's incredible. 81 in the third innings, 50 hits, 103 strikeouts, 9-1, 126 for Schilling and Johnson. But Randy, this ridiculous canard about him not being able to pitch under pressure, it's all over. Him coming out, it was like Hershiser in 88 against the Mets, only this is a greater stage. Schilling 4-0 with a 1-1-2 ERA this postseason. Randy 5-0 with a 1-5-2 ERA. When he was in the bullpen, you said the problem is it's going to be too late because the team might be down after they brought Kurt Schilling back in the eighth. They were down, and yet this offense seems to overcome. When you can take care of a guy like Rivera, who had 23 straight saves and beat him, that says something about your resiliency, top to bottom, including Tony Womack, at effective at-bats. Well, I'm really happy for Tony. I think anybody that knows him that knows how, how hard he plays the game. I think back to keep in mind, his ability to play shortstop is what's really set this team up. He went to right field when he first got here because of Jay Bell. Then he went from right field back to shortstop. Otherwise, this whole club doesn't shake out like, like it does to make it so effective. I'm, he's had a couple big hits. Obviously, here's in game five against St. Louis. Nice flare of left field. He is a lot tougher defense than people think. Tough on the bunt. You know, he can flare the ball to left field. He'll hook the ball down and in like he does here to, to Rivera. He's very quick with his top hand and bottom hand. Makes it tough on guys to, to set up a defense for him to bunt there also. Now, I remember back when we made the trade for uh, a, a expansion draft player, Jason Boyd, and a minor league player from Australia, Paul Weikert. Really turned out pretty well for everybody. It certainly did. You look at some other offensive heroes too in this game. Mark Race comes through with three hits. Danny Batista had a huge series. He went one for three, but out of the leadoff spot, it was Womack getting on base twice via the hit. He didn't walk at all, but again, it was his game winning hit that brought in the winning run that gave the Diamondbacks a World Series championship. He's down on the field with Gary Miller. Tony, take me through the ride of emotions, the things you've done in this postseason and in the St. Louis series, what you went through earlier this year. I know the whole season is dedicated to your father. What do you think he's doing up there right now? He's stuttering, man. He's trying to tell everybody what I did, so he's stuttering right now. But, you know, when he stutters, he's just excited and happy as I am, man. You know, I can just feel the stuttering. I can just feel that, that twins in his throat, man, just to make everything all right. Yeah, there's a sense of calm about you in the midst of all this bedlam. What about the calm going up against a guy like Rivera who doesn't blow saves in the postseason, hasn't done it since 97? Well, man, in order to beat champions, you got to beat the best. And what other way than to go and have a challenge to beat Mario and Rivera? I mean, this guy, is, like you said, lights out. And we did, you know, we just came in and said we can do it, and we actually got it done. So, you know, we believe. When you believe, anything can happen. Okay, well, Tony Womack and the Arizona Diamondbacks champions that they celebrate tonight. Back to you. His hit was certainly as big as that, guys. Luis Gonzalez, who did drive in the ultimate winning run. 2001 walk-off hits, folks. Gonzalez gets it done for Arizona. You see where it went. And the walk-off hits are not very common in the World Series. This is the fifth series winning walk-off hit since 1960 and the first since, of course, 97 when Council scored for the Marlins. Council, interestingly enough, was on base when the winning run was scored here. I tell you what, the way this whole World Series was played out, it probably couldn't have finished in a more dramatic fashion. I mean, Tony Womack coming up with a big hit, us being down by one run in the ninth inning. Couldn't have been scripted any better for our ball club. I mean, the way our team was relentless all year, battling, fighting, tooth and nail, up two to nothing in this series, go back down three, three to two, coming over here, and then, you know, in two tough losses in games four and five. 
playing the way we did yesterday and then uh, game seven, the way, it, the way it ended. That was storybook ending for our, for our team from front to back. Well, the Diamondbacks, as you see, do it in their fourth season, surpassing the Marlins, who were able to have turned the trick in five years. Other baseball expansion franchises that took the Mets eight seasons, the Blue Jays and Royals, went into season 16 and 17. The last team with two 20-game winners to win the World Series were the 78 Yankees, Ron Guidry and Ed Figueroa. And the Yankees had been 10-0 in World Series one-run games under Joe Torre. They are now 10-1. and one. Uh, On one hand, you're... You know, you realize how close you are, but again, on the other hand, we realized how many times we snatched it away from people when they were close. So you really have to take take both sides of this thing. But I, I certainly am proud of uh, the way my ball club responded to the pressure. They did something that you know most people haven't been able to do, and that's get to mow. But uh, you know, there's absolutely no one that I know of in the history of baseball I'd rather have out there in that situation. It's no fun to be on this side of it, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty fortunate, you know, to just to get the chance four years in a row, you know, to, uh, you know, be in the World Series. Um, you know, it's the first taste of being on the other side of it. Uh, it's not nearly as fun. I was so confident that I came in this room and they were setting up and I threw everybody out. That's how confident I was. You're never confident. <laughs> There's a man who's been through it before. Entering the bottom of the ninth, this sort of sums up just how bizarre this World Series has been. Rivera had run off 23 straight saves since 1998. The Yankees had won 11 straight series, and as I mentioned, they were 10-0 in one-run games under Joe Torre. There were some questionable managerial moves. There was some shoddy play in the field, but those two guys get the rings. Back to you.